Hi everybody, um, my name is Martha Grover and I am a writer and an artist um, and I'm the author of a couple books. I won't go, I'm, I'm assuming right now that I'm talking to people that follow me on my Patreon page or that already know about me. Um, I wanted to make this video today because I want, I did a painting last night and it was kind of weird how it happened and I I thought this would make an interesting video to just talk about like what the process uh, was of making this painting and I kind of recoil when I hear artists talk about their process because I don't know what my process is and it's always kind of like intimidating to me I guess I also never went to art school um, so it's not so, it's not like the jargon of art school is not like really familiar to me. Um, however, there was a process of making this painting, and it was not straightforward. So I just want to show you and talk to you uh, about my other projects as well. Um, so I am opening a store. For those of you who don't know, I'm opening a tiny little bookstore slash zine store slash art galleries slash vintage reselling slash basically whatever the hell I want it to be, you know, which is kind of the way I roll. Sorry, this is tilting back and forth. Um, there we go. Um, so when I've been collecting these things that I'm going to alter in some way to re then resell um, as art objects, and some of them are functional and some of them are not. Well, one of the things that I have been collecting whenever I see them at Goodwill or Salvation Army is clipboards, wooden clipboards. And the reason why is because I use clipboards myself. I love clipboards. Um, I use legal pads and clipboards to write down ideas, to take notes, to write to-do lists. Um, so for me, they're part of my organizational universe. And I thought, oh, well, it would be cool to alter these somehow. And what I was thinking of doing was to, um, to collage on top and use Mod Podge. Um, I have not actually gone ahead and done that yet. Um, my main fear is that it, it, when Mod Podge dries, it's a little tacky. Um, so it would be... I'm just afraid, like, especially with the humidity in Oregon, that, like, people will use these clipboards and then their papers and stuff will just, like, cake onto them. Um, so I haven't actually done the test for it yet. But uh, that's what I intended to do. Yesterday, I have a chronic illness, and yesterday I had a really bad pain flare-up, and I've been working really hard on this store, and we've got real estate stuff going on, and I have a book coming out, and um, and so I was like, I was in a lot of pain yesterday, and I was like, you know what? You just need to take a day off where you don't force yourself to do anything that you don't want to do, so why don't you sit down and, and play around with some collage, which if anyone does collage knows that it's a really fun kind of way to just still create something but not feel like pressure because so much of it is out of your hands. I think that's what I like about it. It's kind of like, this is what you have, figure it out, you know? Um, so I was going through, I have tons of books and magazines and stationery and all this ephemera, and I was going through these two, uh, book, a bunch of books and just pulling out stuff that was like, oh, I like this, I like this, I like this. Uh, stuff to put on these clipboards and I've had this uh, book around as you can see for a while it's a Jack and the Beanstalk golden book and I've always really liked the um, this pattern on the inside the bold colors so I tore out the back and um, sat that aside and then I also have this other book that I picked up at the Salvation Army uh, a couple weeks ago, and I love the drawings in here too. Very graphic, great uh, standalone um, illustrations of animals. And I found the rooster inside. And I can't show you the rooster without showing you what I ended up doing, but I'm going to do that anyway. So I found this rooster. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, that'll go great on this background and then I would glue it down and seal with Mod Podge onto 
the clipboard, right? So that's what I was thinking. But after I'd spent so much time with an X-Acto knife, um, did, I mean, I didn't do a great job, but um, cutting cutting around it. And all this whole time, I am listening to stuff on YouTube and, you know, somewhat interacting with it a little bit. Um, yesterday, I binge watched all this stuff on how to do, to make paper mache um, because that's something I've always, I did it when I was a kid and I've always wanted to do it again, but it's very messy. And I'm like, well, now that I have this store, I'll have like a dedicated workspace in the store and I can make a bunch of paper mache stuff all at once and then have it drying and it won't be like, you know, fucking up my living space basically. Um, so that had changed the algorithm on YouTube and I started getting these like crafting videos just coming through just like any kind of creative stuff and something about the, um, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I cut out the rooster and I was like, well, I should trace it because I've done some of that kind of stencil-y kind of stuff before. It's a great silhouette of a rooster. Let me find some watercolors before I glue this down and trace it on my watercolor paper. Well, the only watercolor paper that I could find was this big, huge pad. So I was like, okay, well, I will trace the rooster and then I'll trace it again facing each other and then I will do something with it, right? Um, and then when I got the roosters facing each other like that, it reminded me of psychedelic art because there's so much mirroring in psychedelic art. And so I was staring at these roosters and then I started Googling on YouTube, well, YouTubing, you know, psychedelic art. And I just started watching these videos of like different rock posters from the 60s. And, um, and I was staring at these roosters thinking, what am I going to do with these roosters, you know? And then I saw that iconic, and if you know what I'm talking about, you'll know it. But if you don't know it, then look it up. Milton Glazer is his name, is his designer. And he did an iconic poster of Bob Dylan in the 60s that is his profile and it's black. And then his hair are all these like crazy psychedelic colors, you know. And so I was looking at this rooster and it's in a profile. And I was like, I'm going to make it like Bob that Bob Dylan thing. So um, I actually looked it up. I found out who the designer was. Did you know that Milton Glaser actually was also the person that um, designed the I Love New York logo, which everything everyone riffs on that. Um, and probably my friends that have been to art school are like, Milton Glaser, yeah, everyone knows who that is. I didn't know who that was. Um, anyway, so I was, so I looked that up and um, so this, so I, I cut one rooster off and was like, I'm just going to do the one Dylan rooster tonight. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy on it, you know? So, so I ended up making this. And, um, if you look up the original poster, I feel like I did a pretty damn good job of translating the Bob Dylan, uh, picture into a picture of a rooster. However, you will notice that, um, these colors are not exactly like, um, in the, in the poster. I, there, the more you look at it and the more you realize it's kind of a weird color combination that he chose. And I'm not really sure why, and I'm not sure if that makes it actually more interesting because they're not exactly like complementary colors. And a lot of them don't like, I didn't leave enough white space. There's a lot of, there's actually a lot of white space in the hair, Bob Dylan's hair. Um, so it's not exact. I couldn't get the colors exactly right. Um, and then I, so I got all this part done and I stared at it and I was like, but now what? I mean, it, so what do I do now? I don't know what else to do with this. And um, so then I thought, well, I should write something on it and I should at least use his font. And you could actually Google his font, which is called Baby Teeth, that he created this font. And um, it's really easy to draw because I can't, I'm not a good letterer. Um, <clears throat> so, um, but then I didn't know what to write. And I kept thinking, I actually was thinking for a long time of the lyrics to um, uh, Don't Think Twice It's All Right. When your rooster crows at the break of dawn and writing something about roosters crowing and something about Bob Dylan. But, um, so I just put in Rooster Bob Dylan to the Google search bar, and the first thing, I didn't, I didn't even 
finished Rooster and it said Rooster Rock because it knows I'm in Oregon, it meaning Google, you know. And I was like, perfect. So I went from wanting to do a collage on this to somehow doing this. And I think when you just allow yourself time to create art and don't have any agenda other than that, cool things like that can happen, you know? Um, my practice, my process uh, is a variety of different things. You know, like if I'm, a, if I'm writing and I'm writing, um, if I have like a specific piece I'm working on, um, then I have an agenda you know, and I have like an idea of like how much progress I want to make on that piece. You know, do, am I editing the last half of it? Am I um, just rereading it and familiarizing myself with a piece that I haven't looked at for a really long time? Um, but with art, um, I guess, well, sometimes I have ideas before I start something, but sometimes it's cool to just kind of like see what happens, you know? Um, anyway, so allowing yourself time to just like do open-ended things just to relax. I feel like it's really, it's cool when something good actually comes out of it. I guess what I'm trying to say, uh, I guess I'm out of things to talk about. Um, but I just wanted to say thanks to all my patrons and the store. Hopefully I'll get it open by the end of February. Um, my pain has been really exacerbated by uh, moving boxes around and stuff like that. So um, I'm getting some help from my niece today to put together some furniture um, down there. And uh, just stay tuned. Um, and, I'm, you know, honestly, I really do want to get vaccinated before I open the store all the way up. Uh, but we don't know. I don't know when that's going to happen. So anyway... Bye. Thanks for your support and I will talk to you soon.